Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. In my previous video, I showed you how to set up a self-hosted password solution using Vault Warden. Now, if you're running your own Vault Warden, so your self-hosted Vault Warden password manager, that means you also want to make sure that you have a working and a consistent backup. Because in case of emergency, you just want to deploy a default Vault Warden Docker container, restore from the backup, and get access to all the accounts which, uh, which are stored in that password manager. And in this video, I will show you how I've set it up, and hopefully you get some insights in how to set it up for yourself when you're self-hosting your own password manager using Vault Warden. Let's get into it. So this is the Docker image I am using to create a backup of my Vault Warden password manager. This image is available on Docker Hub. It's created by Brute Force and the name of this image that is Vault Warden backup as well. So this image, what it does, it creates a consistent backup of that SQLite database in the back end because that's the database which uh, is running Vault Warden on the Vault Warden password manager. And you want to make sure that the database is as all databases, of course, if you create a backup, you want to make sure that it that a backup is consistent. Now, there are a lot of options here you can use to create uh, this Docker container. If you scroll down, you will see some basic commands to get you started. And if you scroll down some more, you will see that there are different environmental environment variables, which you can then add to that Docker um, container, which will do a, a or enable or disable specific features in this uh, Fault Warden backup container. Now, I am a big fan of Portainer because that makes it easy for me to manage my Docker host and all the Docker containers on that Docker host. So I've set up Portainer, and if I connect to this local host, I can see that I have my Fault Warden uh, password manager running in there. If I switch really quick to this Fault Warden password manager and I can log in, I can see, just type in the password. I can see that I have two accounts created in this um, password manager because this is for testing purposes, of course. Now, if you want to deploy that um, that Vault Warden backup container, what I've done is I've created a stack or you have to create a stack because that's the way, that's my preferred way of deploying containers from Portainer. You can see that I have already two um, stacks here in my Vault Warden stack. If I open it and go to the editor real quick, you can see that this is the location where my data is being stored on my Docker host. That means in this path, when I go to the home slash vk slash docker slash Vault Warden data folder, that's the folder where Vault Warden is creating all the databases and the files needed to store and the configuration as well um, to store all your information in that password database. So if I connect to my Docker host using SSH, let's do that real quick. This is my Docker host and this is the folder I am in slash home slash vkash slash docker and if I do a list here I can see that I have a fault warden container this is the or the fault warden folder and this folder has all my uh, all the files from my fault warden password manager if I go into that folder and I have that data folder in there as well remember if I go back real quick to that stack you can see that all the data Fault Warden is creating and storing its map to this path physically on my host so let's go back to Pudi real quick and go into that data container or folder and now we can see that Fault Warden password manager is using uh, or creating the files is it needs to store you all your passwords in there. There are SQLite um, files in there as well uh, and as well as attachment because sometimes you have an account and you want to store a additional attachment to that account. Um, for example, a screenshot of a, li of a license key or something else. You can do that within um, uh, the Vault Warden uh, password manager, of course, and it will store those attachment in this directory we want to make sure that those attachments get uh, back up backed up as well so let's go back to portainer real quick so this is my fault warden stack 
So this is running perfectly fine. Now I will create a new stack for Vault Warden backup. Because just like I said, I will use a Docker Compose file to create that Vault Warden container. And I have already prepared something. And this is my Docker Compose file. Uh, I will share this Docker Compose with you guys on my website. You can find it on my website. And of course, you can you will get a link to this uh, to my website in the description of this video. So let I created this Docker Compose file. As you can see here, the important part is I am in Fault Warden backup in this Docker container. I'm telling it where my Fault Warden data actually lives. This is the mapping, the physical mapping in my Docker host, because in the slash data folder in this Docker container, it will look for fault warden data that SQL databases, SQL Lite database and other files attachments. So I'm mapping that physical path where my data is stored from fault warden in this container using this volume mapping. Now I have other mapping here, mappings here as well. I have one mapping in it where I will store the backups, which is going to create, and another one where it will store log files. So let's copy this code and paste it. Go back to the web editor for my stack and paste that in here. Make sure that all the parameters are in there as well. There is a cron job because this will create automatic backups uh, given a cron uh, time setup, a scheduled backup time setup. So basically what you're doing is set up, uh, set this and forget this, right? So uh, the delete after this is also the important part of how long do you want to keep backups uh, from your fault one and password manager. Let's say I will keep them for 120 days and these are the parameters you basically want to have in there, like the backup uh, attachments, you want to have it set up for true. And what all these options are doing, basically, if you go back to that, um, to that fault one on the Docker Hub page, you can see what all the environment variables are doing. So if I, let's see if I check, everything is okay, the name of that image is okay as well. Now I want to deploy the stack and it has successfully deployed that stack. So let's go to the containers because now, as you can see here, there is a additional container in here, fault warden backup. It's still starting. Let's wait for it to complete. Now that fault warden backup container is healthy. And what I've done in my stack, if I go back to the stack, Let's open up that stack I created to the, with, for the Docker Compose file. Open it up, go to the editor. As you can see here, I have created, I have set up a environment variable for backup on startup is true. So that means when I deploy a container using this stack, it will create that container and it will immediately within that container, it will create a backup of my fault warden password manager's database. So if I go back to my uh, terminal and here is the fault warden data. So let's go back one folder, a few folders, and let's see, just for reading purposes, let's keep this. This is the fault warden backup. I want to see if it has actually created a backup during the startup sequence of that container. And here I should have two folders, a backups folder and a log folder. That's correct because that's the folders I specified in my stack. So let's go to the backup folder. As we can see, it has created that backup of my Vault Warden database already. There is a date and a timestamp in there. That's also one of the environmental uh, options, environment options within the Docker container. It has created a database. It has also uh, compressed it. Uh, now you can open this, of course. There is a option also in there to create a encrypted backup if you need to do that for some reason. And um, now I can make sure that just to uh, to copy over this file or to keep this file safe, and I will have consistent backups of my Fault Warden password manager. 
And this is the way to have a reliable solution, a reliable backup solution for your self-hosted fault warden password manager. You can even create archives in there because if you use a specific environment uh, variable, you can tell it and for how long to keep backups in there. So you can pick and choose when you want to restore to. And also um, all the backups are consistent so you can rely on them and you can well, you can be at ease that you have a working solution, a working backup solution that in case you need to restore your Vault Warden container, you can just um, copy over those backup files and restore that. In the next video, I will show you how to restore a Vault Warden solution, a Vault Warden password manager from those backup files. For now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below and leave the comments in the comment section. I will try to get to them as soon as possible. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.